the club has so much potential to provide. People usually look for the big clubs and the Premier League, but I'm looking forward to the, to the season coming. There is a beautiful coastal town on the south coast of England where a small local football team have been waiting for many years to have their story told. They are called Bournemouth Football Club. On September the 11th, 1875, eight enthusiastic gentlemen, led by John Nethercote, met here with one sole objective in mind, to establish a local football team. It was decided to call the club Bournemouth Rovers, however in 1889, following a merger with local football team Bournemouth Arabs, it was decided to call the club Bournemouth Football Club. A proud founding member of Hampshire FA, and also one of the oldest clubs in England, yet few know of their existence. I've never heard of Bournemouth Poppies before. Um, uh. From my house, I can actually see the club. Who are Bournemouth Poppies, I guess, would be my question. Not too much, but I know a couple of guys, I think, that played for them a little while ago. Bournemouth Football Club. <laughs> this can't be it. This ain't it. Just behind me is Victoria Park, the home of Bournemouth Poppies and we've been given exclusive access to journey through the club's past, present, as well as uncover some hidden mysteries and stories of the club. If he hadn't have paid, would have meant us going out of business. Welcome to our local club. Our journey begins with us trying to understand more about the history of Bournemouth Poppies and its national importance. We wanted to talk to some long-standing and influential members at the club who understand the club in their own unique way. We're one of the founding uh, members of the FA. We've been involved for a long time in football and I'm proud of that heritage. William Pickford was a former FA chairman who was very, very keen to promote local football in his hometown. These guys were influential in the world of football, not only at local level. I suppose you'd call us nearly men. We, we always almost get there, but we have actually won the Western League back, back before the war. We've won the league either side of the Great War, so we have won although most of our supporters these days won't remember us winning much. 1996 was, uh, was a dodgy year for the club. Vic Dominey, he, um, he put his hand in his pocket and paid a, a very substantial electricity bill, which if he hadn't have paid, would have meant us going out of business. Victoria Park used to be a farmer's field and one of our fans in uh, we must have won a good game, but he actually gave us the farmer's field as our new ground. And so Victoria Park was, was born at that stage. First ever match. You know, we're talking pre-Hollywood here. We're talking ancient history and suddenly we're playing on a, an ex-farmer's field and, and you've got lights, electric lights. It must have been fantastic in those days donated by a huge club at the time, Sheffield Wednesday. Still big, but uh, in those days they were amongst the mighty teams. I've been here nearly 10 years. I've done various roles in this club. We've got AFC Bournemouth down the road and people think this is the reserve team. Wimborne, Paul were in the league, we were getting 350 to 400 here. But then those teams get promotion, other teams come in who don't bring so many support with them. I think we average a gate of about 70 on a good day. We have a laugh and a joke in a kit room, but they don't go into the kit room. That's my domain. Whilst they come in, I would take the training kit off of them and put it straight into the washing, ready for the next game. This kit has been worn in the decade that I've been here and it's never changed.
The next phase of our journey takes us to the pre-season training as the club prepare for the season ahead as they hope to achieve a high league finish to improve on their season in the Sidham's Wessex Premier League. Outside of football, I manage personal injury claims. I've coached uh, Burwood Town in the Wessex Prem. Um, I've played throughout my years and I used to be a former Bournemouth Poppies player in the youth teams. It gives me kind of light relief away from the family and, and from work and I enjoy it as a hobby. It was difficult a couple of years ago with a young family, but now that they're a bit older, it's, it's time to really get back into it and get focused with Bournemouth Poppies. I was at AFC Bournemouth from when I was about 11 to about 15, so that was sort of good, good four years, good professional coaching, it was really good, really good grounding, under 18 reserve football and between 16 and, and 18, and then I went off to university for four years, played for the Reading University football team, travelled back and forward from when I was at Reading in my last sort of two or three years, started doing pre-season with Poppies and I ended up just coming back every weekend. The final part of our journey takes us off the field, where the club has been busy establishing new sponsorships and working with Nerve Media. It's clear to see that the poppers are moving forward, and we spoke to the people that are key in expanding the club's new and exciting future that lies ahead. Nerve Media is essentially a student-run media team, so we've got our radio station, we've got our Nerve TV team, we are online as well, so we've got our website, and we've also got a news team been going along to help try and entice local business in but also I've been organising the pre-season friendlies. We've got our own ambitions. Ideally we'd like to win the league and get promoted but realistically on the back of the poor season we had it's about maintaining a mid-table if not top half finish. We're always looking for extra hands especially in the media team last season we were very limited with resources so whether it's being a camera op a sound crew just trying to help with the overall directing of our YouTube shoots, so for training, for matches, anything like that. My role with Poppies involves so many things in terms of organising the training sessions, making sure players come to training, prepare the match days. What the future holds for Bournemouth Football Club? I think it has a great potential in terms of helping the community. We're already doing something in terms of trying to bring all the youngsters, but I'm sure it can be a lot more done. Trying to bring more people into the club, trying to probably convert this club into, for example, a student club. We have established a nice partnership with Nerve Media, letting people know that we are here and what we can do for the community. Throughout our journey with Bournemouth Poppers, We've interviewed various members, and what we've found out has been truly amazing. The club's history is very rich, being one of the first teams playing in front of electric lights, so almost going bust in 1996. However, what is truly exciting is the club's future, as the team mount an FA Cup challenge in the upcoming weeks, to having an established media team follow them around every step of the way. 143 years on, and the future definitely looks bright for the Poppies. This is our local club. As long as we can move in the right direction, I'm talking mid-table upwards, and maybe being for a shout of a cup or, or a high finish, then I'm actually excited about that. And it's, it's a higher level than I've ever, ever coached at. Without this type of support, with all the people, all the community, with other students, with other the local businesses, it's always uh, more difficult. I see a great future. I think we're really opening up to the modern world. We're starting to uh, spread our wings. <laughs>